Hey everybody, welcome to Friday's edition of Hot News. I hope you're ready for it, because I am. I'm ready to get into it, but we're getting into it because today's episode is brought to you by betterhelp.com forward slash UFD. BetterHelp has come on as a sponsor. They're a service that I personally use. I really love them because of their affordable professional counseling from licensed therapists that you can get at your convenience anytime you want for really low rates of $35 to $65 per week, depending on how you qualify for it. Or if it's too rich for your blood, you can use their sponsorship opportunities that they have available but just the fact that I can meet with a therapist that can fit into my schedule here in South Africa or I can convert to somebody else if they don't happen to meet my schedule or my needs in that way it's easy to just switch over to a new one it's a fantastic service affordable professional counseling if you need some help whether it be for ongoing issues or just for somebody to talk to and develop your mental health you can check out betterhelp.com forward slash UFD it is not a crisis center service but these are trained licensed therapists so they can help you out with whatever it is you've got going on in your life so thank you you better help for sponsoring this video and now let's just jump into the news but, 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 but before we get into all of that I just want to remind you timestamps are in the video description if you want to skip to a particular story video description timestamps also the pinned comment of this video for your viewing pleasure check it out our first report is from DRAM exchange they're expecting prices of RAM to go down between 1 and 3 percent in Q4 of 2018 so a couple of months wait before we see prices to start to decline however that doesn't take into account the tariffs imports that might be affecting American consumers but the raw cost raw produced shipped portion will be about you know one to three percent cheaper so add 25 percent to that and then yeah I mean you're still that hurts it hurts a lot hopefully uh, maybe there might be some developments on the tariff trade war stuff that's going down otherwise uh, no matter what I say about prices going down everything's still just gonna be insanely expensive Google News Time. So we reported two hot news episodes ago that Google was still tracking people's data even after they turned off location data. And it appears that it, they've uh, updated their settings regarding location data to make it more clear what happens when you disable certain location things, such as uh, what now when you turn off your location services in the Google settings, uh, it says this setting does not affect other location services on your device. It also acknowledges that some location data may be saved as part of your activity on other services services like search and maps. So they're being more forthcoming with the fact that when you turn off your location, it doesn't turn off your location in location-based apps, which is reasonable if, as long as they're being upfront about it. But one would think if you turn off location, it would turn off location overall. So thankfully they've clarified this. Good to know. Good job, Google. Other Google news, it appears that they're coming out with a smart display because a smart speaker to listen to everything you do is not enough. Now you get one that potentially might even have a webcam one day and they can watch you. That's what I want. I want them listening and watching to everything I do and I'm gonna give it away because of my convenience. News that you might not care about, but I totally do. It appears that WhatsApp backups no longer count against your Google Drive storage capacity. Makes me still happy because I get a thousand different images from those old aunties who just wanna send you a thousand different memes, cute cats, and it takes up all your storage because I don't delete them, they just automatically get backed up. And that was counting against my Google Drive cap. Now it no longer will. Thank you, WhatsApp. Thank you, Google. I'm glad to have this uh, update in my life. Video game news time. It appears that Battlefield 5's Battle Royale thing is gonna have fire as a wall instead of like this blue orb that descends upon you. So that's cool. Good job, Frostbite Engine. Looks gorgeous from the teaser trailer that we've got. Then Sony has sold 3 million PlayStation VR copies, which is insane because I don't know very many people who have it who even have a PlayStation. On top of that, they sold over 21.9 million copies of VR engagement platform software is the word I'm looking for, for the PSVR units. So it seems like it's in a pretty healthy place. That's nearly as many consoles as the Wii U ever sold. That's not true, I'm just casting shade. And then in a bit of weird PC VR news, it appears that HTC's VR store will now allow for Oculus support. So you get both platforms working together, which is exactly what VR needs for mass adoption. They don't need these separate environments that cost a whole heck of a lot of money from apart from each other. They need to be unified. Uh, cross compatibility, cheaper, everything about that is how VR is gonna get adopted. We need this to move forward that way. Good job HTC, good job Valve, good job Oculus, good job Facebook, parent companies of all that going on. Love you guys, thank you so much. New product news, it appears that Razer's Mamba Elite will be launching sometime soon with a price of $90, and it has a 5G advanced optical sensor with 16,000 DPI. And then Cooler Master's Wraith Ripper CPU cooler for the Threadripper system will be launching sometime in September. I am totally picking one of these up for our Threadripper 1950X. It just looks so gorgeous. I like. There's no reason not to have that on your Threadripper system. It can dissipate 250 watts of TDP, so you just 
it, just get it, just get it and don't overclock, okay? For those of you who think Intel is far behind because they haven't been able to go from 14 nanometer to 10 nanometer, well, it turns out that they're even further behind than we thought because scientists have just unveiled the world's first single atom transistor. So that's basically like 0.1 nanometers. So now we have that to compete with. Intel has to compete 14 nanometer tech against zero nanometer. Obviously, this isn't gonna make it into any sort of practical chip basically ever, but it's actually pretty decent advanced technology that they can move a single atom to get it to work as like a computer almost. It's not clear exactly how they did it. I'm not signed, I'm not a physic enough to understand it. So uh, you can check the links in the video description if you wanna read up more on how they made a single atom transistor. Okay, we rag on Intel, but they're at least gonna be doing something good with their upcoming ninth gen or Coffee Lake refresh chips that are coming out supposedly in October. There's some leaked slides from a presentation on these chips indicating that yes, indeed, they are going to be soldered. Soldering a CPU, in case you didn't know, is when they actually like, make Make sure that the top heat sink is to the chip and that it actually conducts heat better than it normally does. Intel usually uses like toothpaste there instead. So the thermal transference is not as good. And so you have to like replace it with other things. And then that's what delitting it. You get into a whole heck of a lot of a process in order to get the best performance out of your CPU, where it looks like Intel is trying to get it right out of the gate, a lot better performance thanks to their soldering process. Yes, I know liquid metal does make it better than soldering. However, for general consumers, who either wouldn't use liquid metal or won't, you know, delid whatsoever. This is a good move by Intel, but it's probably a likely a necessary one for them to get eight cores and 16 threads at the 95 watt TDP that they're looking to hit. So necessity, but also good. Thank you, Intel. NVIDIA released its earning reports yesterday indicating that they made quite a bit of money. Their revenue was $3.12 billion, which is up 40% from a year previous. It's down, uh, you know, 3% from the second quarter of this year, likely due to lowering demand in cryptocurrency mining, as well as a few other things like people waiting on buying their upcoming architecture. But NVIDIA is saying that basically every sector that they have across their entire product stack has been growing, which means that they are more dominant than ever and with Turing being announced this past week and going to be unveiled for the consumers this coming Monday, they're probably only going to continue to be a gigantic behemoth of monstrous proportions that AMD is gonna have a hard time keeping up with. So with that being said, let's jump into the leaks, the information, the revealed product stuff that we have about the upcoming cards that are coming out this coming Monday, coming out being announced. So we have we have several different things that we wanna to get to. So the first up is that MSI's Atom Board Partner Cards, the Gaming X Trios have been unveiled as far as what they're going to look like. The box art with the RTX across it. This is thanks to video cards posting this information. We see that the 2080 Ti is gonna have dual eight pin power connectors, will have the NVLink connector instead of SLI, and will have the brand new USB type C virtual link connector, which was developed by Nvidia, AMD, and a few other companies in order to support VR. You will obviously you get HDMI DisplayPort on top of that. Gorgeous thing about this particular MSI card though is that freaking backplate, which is gorgeous. This is probably the best looking card MSI has come out with in recent times. There's hardly any red on it, so good going, not releasing another red card MSI. And then that backplate is just freaking phenomenal. So that bit of news is actually tied to another rumor that's coming out right now, according to several different sources, that the 2080 Ti will be unveiled, announced, and released at the same time as the 2080. This would be a departure from how NVIDIA normally releases these things. Usually it's the 2080, 2070 at the same time, and the, the Ti version would be miles down the road, usually about a year. However, nothing about this launch has been typical. We're about two years since the previous launch, which is the longest time ever. They haven't given us a roadmap for their upcoming architecture, which they haven't done in forever. They like, none of this is normal. Like they're, they're introducing RT cores to their processors. They're changing the naming schemes. So basically the idea that we understand what's going to happen with these cards can be just completely thrown out the window. And the 2080 Ti launching on Monday alongside the 2080 would make sense just because Nvidia can do what it wants and they want to hold the performance crown tier. So the 2080 Ti would be roughly about 4,352 cores, which would be insane performance. Absolutely just mind bogglingly fast, especially 
especially compared to the 2080 being rumored to be as fast, if not a wee bit faster than the Titan V. The expectation is that the 2080 would come in at the $650 to $700 mark, and then this 2080 Ti would launch at closer to $800, $850, which is how Nvidia is gonna make more of its money. It seems like a price hike on the TI version because it actually is, but the 2080 isn't a price hike from where the 1080 launched. That launched at $699 for the Founders Edition. So Nvidia launching the Founders Edition at $699 for the 2080 would make as much sense in the same vein. It does seem like a price increase because they've dropped the price on the 1080 and put the 1080 Ti in that price bracket. So they're going to mitigate that by making us pay more for the 2080 Ti. And then given the fact that we already have leaked images of the 2080 Ti from MSI, as well as the 2080, it kind of makes sense that this could be a potential possibility that would actually happen that they would launch at the same time. A quick update to the story about the leaked graphics cards. It's not just MSI who has leaked editions now. Video cards is actually showing us leaked editions of the upcoming palette cards for the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti, giving further credence to the fact that the 2080 Ti will likely launch on Monday, which, I, like looking at these pictures, palettes, why, why would you do this? This jet stream, look at this. Gunmetal finish with mirror, do this. Don't do tan, don't do red like it has in the RTX 2080. Just simple, clean. This is a gorgeous card. Those are hideous. Do you guys like the, the new palette designs? I, I ain't down with the sickness on those. Then we also have a picture of the raw PCB of an upcoming Turing card, the consumer version. Looks like it could potentially be the Founders Edition. It has the NVLink connector. It says it's a qualitative sample. It has the NVIDIA stuff, the uh, heat sink that would go on top of it. Kind of looks like it would equate to a Founders Edition cooler. So there you go. It looks like NVIDIA's PCB is being leaked. And then this is also following information from Nordic Hardware saying that not only are the cards going to be announced on Monday, but they will actually go on sale on Monday for pre-order. That doesn't mean that they're gonna ship out, but they should be available on NVIDIA's website for everybody to purchase. There's no information whether or not this is also gonna be for the A and B partner cards, the third party cards. It's possible that they would be that way, or it could be that MSI, ASUS, all of them will have their designs ready to show off, and then the pre-order for them will go on a little later on, and then it's just gonna be the Founders Edition that will get the initial sale first off. Who knows how it's gonna work? The 1070 Ti, the Founders Edition, launched at the same time as the AIB Partners, so it's a possibility that this could happen on Monday as well, or it could be that there's a separation between the two and the Gaming X Trio will go on sale later. Nobody knows what's going on, but we know a lot more information than we used to. And now, let's get to the juiciest little bit that I have for you guys today. So we have leaked performance data of the GTX 2060. It appears that this goes in line with the Adore TV rumor that was reported on last week, Friday, that the 2060 will be of the GTX variety, not the RTX variety, and it would have five gigabytes of VRAM, not a normal amount that's even like four or six or eight. Five is what we get, gosh dang it, NVIDIA. But the performance is absolutely insane. So what we have is a 3D Mark score, which is just basically synthetic benchmarks. However, they they are quite beefy. This does not line up with the Door TV's rumor that this is going to be just below a 1070. It's actually on par with the GTX 1080 in its Fire Strike score. We ran benchmarks comparing it against the 1060, 1070, 1070 Ti, and 1080, which you're seeing on the screen, as well as the 1080 Ti. And you can see that the GTX 2060 is equal, just slightly below that GTX 1080. There's no real way of telling if this leak is real. However, this would also correlate to the fact that we've heard that the GTX 2080 will be on par with or faster than a Titan V, so the 2060 being on par or faster than a 1080 would make sense in the same sort of performance skew up. Hopefully, we'll find out if this is a confirmed rumor later on down the line, but there you go, a GTX 2060, as fast as the GTX 1080, Maybe. Again, we will find out a lot of this information on Monday at the Gamescom livestream from NVIDIA. The leaks are coming out fast and furious now because we're so close to the launch of them. So I'm excited for this. I hope you guys are too. We will be doing the live stream of Gamescom here on the UFD Tech channel. So be sure to ring that bell, hit the like button, get subscribed, all that good stuff to stay up to date on that. That's taking place, I think like six or 7 p.m. South African Standard Time, which is around like 12 or 1 p.m. in the afternoon on East Coast US. So 
stay tuned. We will be live for you guys. And that's gonna wrap it up for all of the hot news we have today. Let me know what you thought of any story we have, whether it be the zero nanometer tech, PSVR selling way too many units, or the RTX 2080, 2080 Ti, GTX 2060 news. Let's chat about all of that down below in the comments. Again, wanna remind you that this video is brought to you by betterhelp.com forward slash UFD if you need some affordable professional counseling on your schedule, because it's super convenient. Check it out, links in the video description for that. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. We have some videos coming out this week and weekend that are not hot news. So if you uh, subscribe to us for that, check back uh, tomorrow for some good, good videos. Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.